You know, whenever Jeannie and uh, I are thinking about having a few friends over and uh, uh, for dinner and some laughs, the first guy we call is our next guest, Mr. George Burns. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, now for my opening song. I got so many hits, I don't know which one to sing. Before I do, I must tell you that I'm dressing next door to the chorus girls. And the wall between our dressing room has a little, a little peephole. I had it plugged up. <laughs> then I unplugged it, let them enjoy themselves. <laughs> It's too drafty. You know, I can't talk unless I smoke. Seeing me without a cigar is like seeing Phyllis Diller on the middle page of Playboy. <laughs> At my age, it's exciting. <laughs> my age, seeing a blank page is exciting. <laughs> Everybody wants to know what I smoke. I smoke a domestic cigar. It costs 25 cents. I love it. It fits my whole head. You know that Milton Berle pays $2 for his cigars? If I pay $2 for a cigar, first I dance with it. <laughs> Close. <laughs> well, my opening song. Uh, Augusta, J Augusta J. McCann was a hemp married man. He has been fighting with his wife since married life began. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I always open with a song. Well, Dean Martin opens with a song, and Robert Goulet opens with a song, Harry Belafonte, Judy Garland. All us great singers open the same <laughs> And we all have our own styles. Dean Martin takes a few drinks while he's singing, and Robert Goulet always goes for those top notes, and Harry Belafonte opens his shirt down the air, and Judy sits on the floor and sings over the rainbow. <laughs> One night, I tried all their four styles at once. I took a few drinks, and I went for the high note, and I opened my shirt and sat on the floor. What do you think happened? I hiccup, missed the top note, caught cold, and couldn't get up. <laughs> one, one night at half past three, while out upon a spree, a motor knocked him down and out and nearly broke his knee. One guy looked up and said, I think this bloke is dead. You see, the difference between me and these other singers is that they need you. <laughs> See, when they exit, they need your applause to bring them back. But not me, because I'm coming back anyway. <laughs> Great artist doesn't perform for somebody else's uh, approval. When Rembrandt painted, he didn't, he didn't have an audience sitting out front, looking at him, staring at him. He had something inside him that had to come out. Like Rembrandt, I've got something inside of me that has to come out. You heard me sing. If you had something like that inside of you, you'd want it out. <laughs> One guy looked up and said, I think this bloke is dead. But when he said, let's take him home, McCann jumped up and said, he hollered, don't. Just a minute, just a minute. Hold it, hold it, hold it. You know, I sang this song. I, I sang this song at a party in Hollywood. It was given by Mervyn and Roy. He's one of the great directors. And he gives these small, intimate parties, about 350 people. Anytime you put 350 people into a room that can only hold 60, they got to be intimate. <laughs> and everybody was at the party. There was Zsa Zsa Gabor and Natalie Wood and Jack Benny and Frank Sinatra, uh, uh, Governor, uh, Senator Dirksen and, and Bobby Darren, oh, everybody. And Natalie Wood only stayed a few minutes and left. I says, Natalie, what's your hurry? She says, I can't stand competition. I says, who? She says, standing at the bar there in a tight blue silk outfit. With, that, with those big violet eyes and those eyelashes and that gorgeous hairdo. And she was right, Tony Curtis looked beautiful. <laughs> then Frank Sinatra said something to Jack Benny and Jack Benny laughed for an hour. I said, Jack, what did he say? He says, I don't know, but he's doing so well, it must have been funny. <laughs> I was sitting at the same table with Senator Dirksen and that hairdo was for real. I don't think he comes it in the morning. He sticks his head into a wearing blender. <laughs> I said, Senator, I heard your record and I loved it, and I think you and I ought to make a record, a record together. You could do the Gettysburg Address, and then I could do it in syncopated patter. He said, Pass the salt. White <laughs> salt. And then Zsa Zsa Gabor was sitting at the table, and, and Groucho Marx came over and drove her out of her skull. 
He told her that he dreamt about her last night, and then he didn't tell her what he dreamt and thanked her for a lovely evening. <laughs> I told him about a dream I had. I had, I had, I had down the stream. I dreamt that I was alone on this desert island with, with Anne Margaret and Jill, and, uh, uh, Jill St. John. And, and it really was a horrible dream. You're wondering what would make a dream like that horrible. Well, in it, I was Mrs. Miller. <laughs> there we were, just three girls on the island. And who do you think was washed ashore? Lauren Swelk. <laughs> who do you think he went for? Me. <laughs> All night long, a one and a two. <laughs> well, anyway, when I told the story, they laughed at the table, but said it to Dirksen, didn't I? I said, Senator, didn't you think that was funny? He says, pass the salt. <laughs> He's salt happy. All right, the song. One guy looked up and said, I think this guy is dead. When he said, let's take him home. All right. McCann jumped up and said, he hollered, don't take me home. Please don't take me home. Oh, tell me what did I do to you? Hold it, hold it, hold it. That's enough of that. Look, I got a little surprise for you. One of the stage ends has a little daughter. She's a very young girl, and we, we worked on a little thing here. And she's never done this before, and I'm going to bring her out here, so I want you to be nice. Lisa, come on out. Lisa Miller. Lisa, are you, um, are you ready to do the song with me? Yes, sir, Mr. Burns. Are you nervous? Yes, sir. You want to hold my hand? Uh-huh. Easy now, or my fingers will come loose. <laughs> uh, in my key. You know how the first line goes. Two sweethearts in the country town, the neighbors say, lived happily the whole day long. How old are you, Lisa? Nineteen. Nineteen? When I was nineteen, John Philip Sousa's father made my arrangements. <laughs> nineteen? Do you know about the birds and the bees? When I was ten, I explained it to my mother. <laughs> Did you tell her that the bees carried flour from... pup flour from... The bees carried pollen from flower to flower on their feet? Yeah, and she tried it, and she said it was nothing. You saved that for me. Yes. Yeah. Well, look, Lisa, you know, if, uh, if, um, I, I don't know what to do with you kids today. You all, you all seem so sharp. Well, Mr. Burns, we were talking about you in the dressing room. Yeah. And we've decided you're a very attractive man. Well, I'm glad I didn't plug up that little loophole. <laughs> you know, Lisa, if, if I were younger and you were older, I'd ask you out. Mr. Burns, if I were much older, I'd go out with you. If you were much older, I wouldn't ask you in the first place. <laughs> but, Mr. Burns, if we went out, what would we do? Look, kid, if you can't remember, how do you expect me to? <laughs> Let me ask you a simple question. Supposing I said to you right now, Lisa, how about going out with me tonight? What would you say? Pass the song. Pass the song. <laughs> okay, let's do the song. I'll do it nice now. Two sweethearts in a country town, the neighbors say, lived happily the whole day long. Until one day, Tony, he must go away. She wondered then what could go wrong. At my age, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> he said... He said, you know, it's true. I love you best of all. Yet it's best that we should part. Just as he went away, he heard his sweetheart say, Now, here's a pretty tempo, Lisa, play with it. Although it broke your heart. Some of these days. Yes, one of these days. You're gonna miss me, honey. You're gonna miss me, baby. Some of these days. Oh, some of these days. You're gonna feel so lonely. You'll be feeling old. So lonely. You used to love it when I'd hug and you squeeze you. Miss my kisses. You'd ask for more, and you I tease miss you. Me only you want me only when you're away. When you're a million, you'll feel so lonely in the evening when the sun goes Just down. Just for me only. I'll be on the other side of town. Cause you know, honey. Oh, you know, baby. That you had your way. You went and had your own sweet and way. You leave Comes me, tomorrow. Set you tomorrow. Know it will grieve you me. can bet you're gonna be full of sorrow. You're gonna miss your blue eyes, baby. baby. Some of it. The 
I noticed you uh, work with uh, a young chick. Yeah, well, I always work with young people. Huh? How old are you, Dean? Oh, I'm at the awkward age. I'm too old for uh, Phyllis Diller and too young for Phyllis Diller. <laughs> well, I'm too old for Phyllis Diller with makeup on. Is that right, Guilty? Oh, 